Stout, founder and CEO of Vanco Bar Exam Coaching. And welcome to Vlogmas Day 20, Bar Prep, but make it festive. I am all casual today with my ponytail and Christmas con sweatshirt for a very important reason. We're doing some yoga today, but first a little bit about my Christmas attire for today. I got this Christmas con sweatshirt um, last year, my mom and I went to the very first Christmas convention, which was in New Jersey. Um, and it had all like the Hallmark and Lifetime actors who do all the Christmas movies, which my mom and I are obsessed with. Um, we had tickets to go this year. Unfortunately, the in-person was canceled and it went virtual. So we're hoping we can go again next year. But my mom bought me this sweatshirt as a souvenir. Um, and it's the perfect, perfect sweatshirt to wear for yoga. Today, we are being joined by my good friend and yoga instructor and business owner and bar teacher. She's a, she is a law professor as well. And so she knows the struggle. Um, Danielle Kogel, she is going to be joining us. She can tell us a little bit about her business, Ariel Haven. And then she is going to teach us some Christmas yoga poses that are great for um, reducing and alleviating stress. So let's get started. Okay. Hello. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, let's get a look at that shirt. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm really glad that I was present for when you got that. Um, so before we jump in with the yoga poses, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about like Ariel Haven, what you do, how they can connect with you, all of that stuff. Sure. So in my daytime life, I am a law professor, but in my other life, I am a yoga teacher. I am the co-owner of Ariel Haven. It's an aerial dance and yoga studio in Queens. I am currently teaching yoga classes online during this pandemic. So if you wanted to take any classes, you can find us at arielhaven.com and you can register for any of our Zoom classes there. I will link to Ariel Haven in the description of the video. So um, I'm super excited. This is such a cheesy idea and I appreciate you going along with going along with me. But so what will you be teaching us today, Danielle? So I'm going to just be teaching you some poses um, that are good for stress relief. So if you are studying for the bar exam or just dealing with regular everyday stress. There's some poses that you can do that can help either by releasing tension in muscles that you typically get tight when you're stressed out or just poses that are known to be stress relievers. So these poses all have um, names, but for today, they have fun Christmas names or holiday names, so, which I do not make. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me right under that bus. <laughs> <laughs> just want to make that clear. Um, so some of these poses you will recognize by their um, not holiday name, but we're going to go with the holiday names today. Yeah, we're being festive, so, okay? Everyone we're being festive because you're being jump festive. Off. I'm going to so, get on my mat so I can follow along. Okay. So yeah, so I'm just going to demonstrate the pose. This isn't like a yoga flow. This isn't a class, but this is just something that if you need a break, you can just pop into one of these poses and it will help you with your stress relief. So the first pose that we're going to do is called resting elf pose, resting elf pose. So we're going to get on our, on our knees and press her. You may know what I'm doing right now by its normal name, but we're going to call it resting elf today. So when you're a resting elf, you can either have your hands extended in front of you or you can take them alongside your body. So now this is meant to be relaxing. So if your head does not comfortably rest on the floor, you can take your hands in fists, stack them on top of each other, and then just rest your head on your hands, or you can put a block under there. You want it to just be a, a restful pose. So don't stress if it's hurting you at all, use your fists to bring the floor up to your head. And you can just stay there when you're there, take some nice deep breaths into your lower back. You wanna feel like your breath is spreading out the vertebrae in your low back, just giving you a little like massage with your inhales and exhales. Okay, our second pose that we're gonna talk about is called partridge in a pear tree pose. So, and, and, and funnily, it's not tree pose. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna teach this to you in stages actually, because I think that for stress relief purposes, the upper half of it is more helpful. So, or just the most helpful. So what we're going to do is just cross our arms underneath each other, one like this. 
If you can bring your palms together, that's great. If you can't, you can hook your fingers together like that. If you can't, you can keep your hands totally separated or you can put a strap in one hand and in the other hand and use that to kind of hold on to so you don't have to use your hands. And then we're just gonna bring our elbows up to shoulder height and you're gonna take some nice deep breaths into that space between your shoulders. So this is a really good pose to do if you're spending a lot of time on the computer and you're like this, if you get tension headaches and you have a lot of tightness in your shoulders, your trapezius muscles, your upper back, that will help. The full pose for this, which is why it's called partridge and pear tree today, is we stand and we hook one leg around and we do the same thing with the arms. So with our legs, we would go a little bit bent like in a chair pose. We hook one leg around. If you can't hook the toe, you don't have to. You can just put your foot down and sit into it and then. I don't think I've ever done full, this one full. I only ever do the arms. Yeah, this and this is like, your foot has to be very flexy bendy to wrap all the way around. I actually can't really do it that well on the other side. So you don't have to do that. You can just cross and sit like that. But for stress relief purposes, the arms are the bigger help anyway. Uh, make sure you do it on both sides. Any of these poses, you wanna do both sides so that you get a nice balance. Uh, okay, our next pose is called Santa Slay. So we're gonna lay down and we're going to lift our hips up. So when we're here, we wanna make sure that our toes are pointing straight forward and that our legs are parallel to each other. We're gonna tuck our pelvis and just roll the hips up to the sky. And then we're gonna take our hands together underneath our butt and slide our shoulders towards each other. So when you're here, just make sure that your feet are facing forward and you wanna think about your legs being active, like you're trying to hold a block or a ball in between them and try to keep your butt relaxed. So instead of lifting your hips by squeezing your glute muscles and kind of jamming that low back, think about pressing the floor away to lift your hips up instead. And you can just stay there for like six to 10 breaths, release. And when you come down, just hug your knees into your chest a little bit. You can kind of rock it side to side, give yourself a little break with that. Okay, our next pose is called our gingerbread house. <laughs> so we're gonna stand up. And we're gonna take our legs wide apart. So I let's the first best time, first. by the way. Best what? time making these poses. Wait, what did you say? I didn't oh, hear. I, I had the best time making these. Making these up, yes. <laughs> As I said, I am not responsible for these names. So we're gonna take our toes and turn. Let's do our right, so we're just all on the same page. Turn our right foot, our right toes out, so that the toes are facing the front of the mat, and you're gonna angle that left foot in slightly at a 45 degree angle. So you're gonna reach out, big inhale. Exhale, we're gonna stretch out over that front leg and then take it down wherever you land. So if you've taken a yoga class before, especially like a power yoga class, you might feel that peer pressure to bring your, put your hand down to the floor. That's not necessary at all. It's more important that you're rotating up and that you're stacking your arms on top of each other. So you're getting that nice rotation through your spine. And then you wanna to try to not put any weight in this hand. So we wanna really kind of use the core. You could also reverse this, get a nice stretch through your side body. Just keep your feet where you're at, you are and lift up and back with your other hand. We'll call that reverse gingerbread. <laughs> reverse gingerbread house. <laughs> Again, make sure you're doing everything on both sides. So remember you're just angling that back foot in slightly and turning the front foot all the way out. So you're gonna feel a nice stretch on the side of your body. Okay, our next is, I'm gonna save that one for the end. Okay, our next one is Rudolph and Clarice. Now, let's think animals. What could we be talking about here? So, we're gonna come to our hands and knees. Let's see if you can figure out what the pose is really called in the real world. So, we're gonna go. so when we do our Rudolph, we're gonna arch our back and put, push into our hands just to kind of open up the space between the shoulder blades. And then when we do our Clarice, we're gonna drop the belly and look up to the sky. So while you're flowing through this, you're just gonna use your breath here. So you inhale as you drop your belly, look up. Exhale as you round your spine and tuck your chin in. And just do that a few times, kind of flowing through. But each time you come into that rounded back, make sure that you're kind of pressing into the floor. 
and you should feel that space between your shoulders getting a little bit bigger. So we really just want to open up. It's all about releasing any tension in these muscles. When you're stressed, you're like, eh, like that all the time. And that creates a lot of tension headaches and makes you just feel not so great. Okay. This is my favorite pose. We're calling it baby reindeer today. So we're going to come down to our hands and knees. We're going to keep our bottoms up in the air and reach our hands forward nice and long. So it's like, what do we call a child's sleep resting elf? It's like <laughs> sleeping elf. <laughs> Sorry. It's like resting elf, except our bottoms are up. So you're going to feel that extra stretch across your mid back and your upper back and into your shoulders and just stay there and breathe into it. All of these poses that you're holding, try to hold them for like six to 10 breaths, but really hold them as long as you want because you're just doing it to feel good. So hold it till you feel better, um, but at least six to 10 breaths that will help you really get into it. So um, that's a good one for, for back tension and, and upper back stress. Okay, um, so our next one, we're gonna call it North Pole. So you're gonna find a wall near you. You don't I'll have a wall. I'm just gonna watch. If you one. don't have a wall, I'll show you what to do. Okay. You have a wall. You're going to start by sitting super close to it so that you can kind of just roll yourself up and keep your legs up there. So this is just a resting pose. So if you don't have a wall nearby, another option would just be to lay down with your legs up in the air and put your hands underneath your hips so that your hips are just floating over your your legs are just floating over your hips like a north pole. So the goal here is to just get that nice inversion, our legs above our heart, especially if we're sitting all day long. This is really helpful and you don't want to have to use any effort. So that's why it's nice to use a wall. If you have a wall and you can just do that and you don't have to think about it, your legs float. But if you don't have a wall, putting your hands underneath your hips will help you get to that point where it's not going to take any effort to keep you there. And I would stay there for at least 10 breaths. Um, but again, stay as long as it feels good for you. Um, okay. So easy, mini, mini Christmas tree, just sitting nice and calm. You can just sit, right? Just sitting with your legs crossed, hands on your knees, closing your eyes, rolling your shoulders back and down, and just using this pose to kind of take a few nice deep breaths. That's always an option as well. So we're just sitting and breathing just relaxing. Um, okay, Mel melting snowman. So we're gonna melt like a snowman now. Um, this, is, this is a forward bend, right? So forward bends generally are great for stress relief. So either standing or seated. You can do them seated also, but if you're doing it standing, we're gonna think like we're a melting snowman. I always like to kind of put my hands on my hips, take a nice deep breath, flat back, come forward, and then you can just reach it down. So you can just hang out here and relax. If you want to give yourself a little bit extra weight, you can hold on to your elbows and just let it hang there. That's really up to you. Whatever works. Don't feel like you have to touch the floor to make it work. If you don't, you can just hang here and relax wherever you're at. To come up, you either want to take your hands back to your hips, lead with a flat back, sending your heart up, or you're going to put a slight bend in your knees, tuck your pelvis, and think about stacking your vertebrae on top of each other when you come up. So just be careful as you come up with your back, either flat back or bend the knees, tuck the pelvis and roll up nice and slow. Okay. Um, this one's called snowfall. I'm not really sure why you call it snowfall. But okay. All right. So we're going to come Some of them made more sense than others. <laughs> otherwise known as dolphin. Let's just say that so you know what we're talking about a little bit. So we're going to come down to our hands and knees. So dolphin is similar or so, so is similar to um, downward facing dog. Well, I'm going to do it on our forearm. So let's try down dog first, just so we know. Down dog is just a great pose. It's a great full body stretch. It's not necessarily known for its stress relieving techniques, but it's a good one just to kind of lengthen the backs of your legs, open up the chest and relax. So now for our dolphin, we're going to basically, or I'm sorry, snowfall, we're going to do the same thing, only we're going to come down to our forearms. So you're going to clasp your hands together like this, and then you're going to just think about coming up onto that downward dog pose with our elbows down. 
So our hands are clasped, our elbows are down. And now we're getting a little bit more of that upper body, upper back stretch. Good. You can come down. I would always come back to a resting elf pose after we do You're that. Good. Stretch out. <laughs> so um, that's always a good counter stretch after that. Um, okay. And then we have an icicle. We have our icicle. Like I said before, forward bends are always a good thing for stress relief. So you can just do what we did standing, seated. So I would flex my feet and then I would just reach forward. So every time you bend or stretch, always think about inhaling first and then exhaling into the stretch. It just helps you put some length in it and gives you a little bit extra movement. Good. So again, stay there for six to 10 breaths. And then we'll go back to the top of the list. Where was it? Okay. Finally, long winter's nap. Long winter's nap is our final relaxation or our Shavasana pose where we're just relaxing and laying down. So it looks like we're just laying here. And you might think that is not stress relief at all because when I lay there, my mind starts to wander and I am getting a little bit more stressed because I feel like I should be doing things. So that's where we want to think about focusing on something that will help us relax. They always say that Shavasana is actually the hardest pose in yoga because it doesn't just require your body to be engaged or not engaged in this case, it requires your mind also. So we want to, while we're laying there, think about something that will help us focus our attention on only what's going on on our mat and not anything else that we might be worried about. So what I like to do when I'm in long winter's nap, um, I, I do one of two things. First, I'll either just count my breaths. So while you're laying there, you can count your breath. Inhale is one, exhale is two, inhale three, exhale four, and keep going until you get to 10 and then start over from one. Now you might realize that your mind has wandered before you even got to 10. That's totally normal. That's fine. As soon as you realize that your mind has wandered, just stop and start over again at one. So that's one thing that you can do to help you focus. And it, it's not perfect where none of us are perfect. It's always hard to, to stop your mind from racing, but it will just help you and give you something to go back to every time your mind does race. The other thing that I like to do is just repeat a mantra to myself. So I'll inhale the word I am and exhale whatever I want to be. So if you want to be relaxed, you can inhale I am, exhale relax, and just repeat that to yourself a bunch of times. So anytime you need a little mindfulness minute, a little break, you can go lay down in your long winter's nap and do one of those two things. Um, and so that was our list of stress relief poses. And um, what was your favorite named pose what what was your favorite named pose my favorite named pose um I think the gingerbread house <laughs> one made sense to me <laughs> I thought I was most pleased with the melting snowman I thought I like that, that too pretty... I spent I spent more time on that than I should probably admit <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for doing this for us. I know that the students will appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Again, you can find Danielle and Ariel Haven at arielhaven.com and you should definitely, I take her online logo, yoga classes. They're great. I would recommend them. Um, so we will see you soon. Okay. Bye. Good luck, everyone. All right. So a huge thank you to Danielle for taking the time out of her very busy schedule to come and do that with us today. I hope you'll check out Ariel Haven and their online classes. Um, that would be a really great thing to incorporate into your schedule during bar prep. So I hope this video was a little bit fun and different for you and that you enjoyed it. Um, and don't forget that if you want to learn more about us, you can find us at vincoprep.com. Or if you want to schedule a free bar prep consult with me, just email Sheena at info at bincoprep.com and she will hook you up with a free consult. We can talk about whether you'd be a good fit for bar exam coaching. In the meantime, I've got to go work on tomorrow's video. So I will see you back here tomorrow.